Lorenzo Binishmaghi was on the front line of the Eurozone debt crisis until late last year, when he stepped down from the European Central Bank's executive board. Since then, he's been following a career in academia, including in the US. That's given him a unique perspective on the debt problems on both sides of the Atlantic, including on the impending fiscal cliff of tax increases and spending cuts that, if not resolved, could send the US economy back into recession and deliver severe shock to the global economy. Mr. Binish Maggi, do you think you can make comparisons between where the US is now and where the Eurozone has been for the last few years? Well, the US is probably still in a better position because financial markets uh, are not so concerned as to uh, start increasing the risk premium as uh, instead happened uh, for many European countries. But uh, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't wait uh, for, for the markets to wake up. Um, one of the reasons, of course, why, or the main reason why there's no market pressure is because of the actions uh, the Fed has taken, quantitative easing, QE3, and so on. Um, do you think that's uh, changed the incentives for the politicians? Well, the risk is that the politicians uh, ask the Fed to do the job, um, and the Fed accepts to do the job of uh, easing the conditions uh, for politicians to, to make the adjustments, but uh, the adjustment has to be made. Uh, in other words, you think the, the Fed has taken the pressure off the politicians? I mean, was that wise? Well, that's, that's a risk. That's a risk. Uh, of course, it depends on the institutional framework. Uh, maybe the Fed uh, uh, has more difficulties in, in stepping back and asking uh, Congress and the administration to do their own part, like the ECB does. Um, Let's look at your own experience at the ECB until the end of last year. Um, back in May 2010, uh, Jean-Claude Trichet, who was then the ECB president, launched a bond buying program, but it wasn't a great success. W why was that? Well, I think initially it was a great success. I think um, uh, uh, spreads came down, uh, the markets uh, improved, but then uh, this improvement in the markets led politicians to relax. Uh, you remember that um, the uh, EFSF took more than six months to be ratified. Uh, the regulators uh, messed it up with the stress tests. And so, uh, as in all uh, cases, you have the monetary policy which helps to gain time, but if the other part of the bridge is not built, then the crisis sooner or later emerges. Yeah, and then we had a repeat um, in the summer of last year, didn't we, with uh, Spain and Italy? Absolutely. Uh, we had a very strong improvement after the uh, Spanish and Italian governments committed to, to make the changes that the ECB had requested through the famous letter. But then, after a few weeks, when the government started to backtrack, uh, then uh, markets got nervous again. And well, was it really an option, though, for the ECB not to have acted in both those instances? What would have happened then? Well, I think the policymakers always have to ask themselves, uh, what's the alternative? Is not acting uh, an alternative or not? And I think uh, in the case of a central bank, you cannot really uh, withdraw from the markets and expect that uh, the collapse of the system will uh, will make things uh, better. I think you have to interact with the political authorities and, and try to make your policy conditional on their own action. Well, can they play a, a game of chicken, if you like, with the markets? Well, we know that games of chicken are very dangerous. And uh, in the end, you have to ask yourself uh, uh, whether there is a better way off. There is a better contractual arrangement. Uh, it's not necessarily uh, easy to find, and probably the ECB now can build on the experience of the past, uh, of the previous uh, Ex examples which maybe were not that successful and hopefully this one will be more successful. So, so are you worried now about the, the fiscal cliff in the US? I mean, do you think the, the Fed action is going to somehow prevent a sensible solution? Well, yeah, everybody's talking about the fiscal cliff and avoiding it, but it all depends how it is avoided because you can avoid it by um, an agreement which basically postpones everything uh, but then the risk is that the markets will realize that there is no credible medium-term adjustment uh, for the fiscal uh, uh, policy in the U.S. And that, that would be a uh, wakening up uh, that uh, the Fed may, may try to postpone, but sooner or later will happen. Mr. Benich-Maggi, thank you very much. Thank you.